Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Last time, we met Zaws the Blacksmith back on his island once again, who told us we need to head back to the Temple of the Ocean King. And before heading back, we went around the world getting all the items that we can now get. We have a letter from Joanne the Mermaid starting things off now as we go back to Murkay Island to do what we need to. Dear Link, thanks for delivering that letter to me. It was so nice to hear from my sister. I haven't run into Jolene yet, but that's okay. It's just good to know we've always got that sister connection. We'll run into each other eventually. It's inevitable considering our taste in hobbies is the same. We're both just obsessed with dressing up in costumes. My sister just prefers her silk pirate clothes to her mermaid costume. Er, costume. That's a costume. Tee. <laughs> Maybe I should have kept that little bit in my diary. Take this as a gift. It's just a little something to show my appreciation. My favorite, your favorite pretend mermaid, Joanne. A parasol chimney, that's new. And I agree, it is only a matter of time before Jolene sails her ship into your kiddie pool. Speaking of Jolene, uh, remember that spot with the pirate ships where I salvaged and I was able to get a new ship part? I chose to go there a few more times because it is renewable every time that you use the slate. In doing so, got a couple more ship parts, only one new one, which you see on screen right now, and I ran into jo uh, Jolene two more times. Line bet gave a big green rupee and a big red rupee. Those rewards are getting very much worth it, and you can see why I was making such a big deal out of it. On Murkay Isle, in the shop, there is a quiver upgrade for a thousand rupees. Can't afford this yet, and I'd rather save my money for other things, so it's being left for a little bit, but you know that it's there. I also recommend very, very deeply stock up on potions. I could buy purple potions. I have two red ones right now. And purple potions are better. I'm not going to. I want to save my money for a few things, and honestly, it worries me a little bit because I feel a little underprepared for what I'm going to try to do today uh, with just two red potions. The more, the better. Ah, I've been here far too long. I bet my wife is steaming mad now. Now I don't, don't really want to go home. So you found the ghost ship. Well, how fair is your friend? Did you find her? Really? But you can still save her, I hope. Surely if old Osha says it's possible, then fortune may yet smile on you, son. I thought I'd show that in the milk bar is occasional new information for you. It's just kind of an information hub in this main hub town, at least the closest thing to it. And ho oh, there! Excuse you. Sorry for being so loud. Thought you were going to walk right on by, so I got a little too excited. Anyway... Have you heard about the Chief of the Frogs? Yeah, I've met him. Oh, so you know that. Are you sure? Positive? What do you say if I say no? They're likely to encounter many golden frogs swimming the sea, one of them reigns supreme, a giant golden frog that rides on the wind. They want to make very sure that you didn't skip over that sign on the Isle of Gust. <laughs> I don't blame them, though. The fast travel system has made everything loads easier. Next up, I'm going to be real with you. This Easter Island head that I pointed out last time and said, haha, that's really, really funny that it's up on this ledge and that's kind of weird and out of place. It turns out it's supposed to shine a light on that bombable wall that I just normally knew where it was last time. I've always known that that bombable wall was there just from trying out the bombs on walls. I just always kind of knew about it. But apparently, there is a cave entrance over, or cave exit over this way that you're supposed to use to go over there and it shines the light on that wall showing that it's bombable. I cannot for the life of me figure out how to get over this. I have gone through the mountain passage four different times trying to find my way, eventually giving up and checking walkthroughs. And I've looked at two different walkthroughs that have screenshots and neither of them tell you to do this. They just tell you to bomb the wall. And I don't know what I'm missing. It's driving me nuts, but I have the collectible anyway. and. Always did it that particular way, but I thought I'd be honest in telling you that I don't know how to do it, and I'd appreciate it if somebody could tell me what to do, because I'm stumped, and I'm sure it's a lot simpler than I'm making it out to be. I'm sure it's really not that hard, it's just kind of one of those things that I have trouble with, I guess. What I do not have trouble with is, thanks to my powers of note-taking... There's this. Don't tell me that this is actually going to be it. That would be awful if it, this was going to be the case, if it's going to leave me right there. Geozard! You think you're so cool? Red Rupee, that's cool. Don't tell me. 
Oh my! <laughs> well, uh, you guys got a good laugh out of me being honest. <laughs> I guess now you know I'm not a liar. What did this even say? I wasn't reading. Uh, cliffside, not so far from here, has a hidden weak spot. Trying to be in parallel. Parallel with the tavern on Merke. Oh, the temple and Merke Tavern. Okay. Uh, hit this. Nothing? I had people complaining about me. I had people complaining to me that I didn't do this last time we were here. So I was assuming it was something that I should already be able to do, and it's... I, it's not. <laughs> Up on the ledge, treasure chest. Big green rupee! I can buy that quiver upgrade if I want to now. And a sickle anchor. That's, I think, new. And in a set that we have a lot of things in. It's a pretty cool idea, yet, ouch, I really did not do this the intended way. With that caught up, off to the temple of the Ocean King. Another earthquake! I can sense it. It's coming from the temple, deep beneath it. So Bella must be causing the earthquakes that keep rattling the island. Hurry! Let's get that sea chart and find the pure metals! <sighs> Remember last visit? I'm gonna reiterate. You got two bottles, fill them up with something useful. I've gotten more time worth of Sand of Hours from getting treasure charts around the world. Here's what I'm looking like. 16 minutes. With those 16 minutes, we gotta find the new chart. But first, we have to walk through this linear room to the end and see that on basement one, there are swift phantoms in place of the blue ones now. It really is true that painting something red makes it faster. Phantoms like Reaplings can be shot in the back with an arrow or stabbed in the back with a fire sword to disable them. Use this to your advantage. Bomb these blocks to get the switch, opening the door to get the key and shove it in that keyhole to basement two. Bomb the cracked wall, get the phantom's attention and hit the two switches to make the key fall down. Swift phantoms pick up keys if they see them, so use them for free shipping to your safe zone. Bomb the crack wall to the left of the exit for 30 more seconds, shove that key into the door and shove yourself into basement three. Go to the top left and give me that giant Dorito. Slot it in, go right, bomb the blocks and add 30 seconds. I wonder what flavor they are. Nearby, dig up the hole, float up, shoot the eye switch and get a power gem. Stab the phantom. Get the key to obtain the third Dorito of life. Doors open. Basement four, hit the eye switch, turn off every blowy octo. Bottom right has 30 more seconds. Off to the left, bomb this, hit switch, open door, get key, talk to bones. Thanks for the hot tip. Use key, basement five, eye switch, lower specs, 30 more seconds. Fight bubbles, 15 more seconds. Fight mold orbs, 15 more seconds. Arrow switch, big green rupee of all potions are full. Basement six, the crested door at last. But kill all the phantom eyes first. Kill the eyes that aren't phantoms too to get a treasure chart. Single stroke triforce. And then the new content starts. This room looks different than it did last time. Maybe we went to another place when we used this crest Zhao showed us. Hey Link, it's my turn now. This is the door of courage. Only the power of courage can open it. Come on Link, get your courage up and tap it. I don't want to see what the door of friendship looks like. <laughs> hey! Dark terrors lurk ahead. I'll share something with you that will help you survive. Step into the yellow light to save your journey time and return to the entrance. Step into the yellow light at the temple entrance to in return here instantly. In other words, this is a midway point. It sounds an awful lot like this is going to fix all the problems with the Temple of the Ocean King. And that this is going to be the only time that it's really even that bad. That once we get through this visit, we can just come back here anytime that we want and there's no downside to it. That is not the case. I'll use it here and show. It took 2 minutes and 47 seconds to reach this room. If I return to the temple entrance, then this warp will take away two minutes and 47 seconds out of the Phantom Hourglass. Sounds fair. But remember that we're gaining access to new tools all the time that is making it easier and easier to get through the temple, thus saving us time, so that we have more room to screw up on the actual new stuff that's going to be challenging us. I don't like using this. 
There's another reason why it's terrible, but it's not apparent on this visit, so... Just know that as cool as it sounds and as much as it seems like all of your problems are solved... Oh god, my time in the Phantom Hourglass is 1313. <laughs> uh, it's asking for trouble. These doors that the different spirits used looked different at one point in development. They depicted the fairies themselves and even depicted certain fairy colors that are not in the finished game. I can see why they changed it because what we ended up getting was pretty cool. Right here, our shield gets a chance to be useful. Either run past those arrow traps or just simply face them with the sword drawn and it'll use the shield. <laughs> uh, right away, time in the Phantom Hourglass. You need it, bad. This floor, oh, this floor. Hey, Link, did you hear something? This floor makes a sound when you run on it. The phantoms, they'll hear us. But the floor didn't make a sound when you walked. I get it, you have to walk slowly on these floors when there's a phantom nearby. I'm so glad that you get it, Ciala. I was worried that you didn't. <laughs> this is an interesting combination of mechanics. You gotta be stealthy while being timed, yet... Oh, oh, oh why did I run that? Why did I run that way? Okay, the Phantom Menace is now gone. What I was trying to say is it's an interesting blend of mechanics and you're gonna be very tempted to rush things and just not care if they hear you thinking that you can totally make it. I'm gonna tell you otherwise. I am gonna be rushing a bit, maybe even rushing a lot, but above all in this segment, do not get hit. If the phantoms get too many pot shots and take away too much time, you're not gonna be able to do something optional that, trust me, you're gonna want to attempt. Just a friendly warning. I don't believe that phantoms walk on air. If I had courage, I could cross to the other side. Sounds like a hint to me. We're gonna let that phantom wake up. Go to the upper left corner, grab 30 more seconds of the phantom hourglass, and we have another hint. I found the O pedestal. This, but where is the O crystal? You can see that that phantom hasn't a beauty hasn't to care. He feels like a feather that's walking on air. I feel like I got those lyrics wrong. Oh. It wouldn't surprise me because I don't know anything about music or TV or movies or books. I like video games, okay? You can use that to walk to the other side and... Oh god! Okay. I am a hypocrite and I didn't suffer for it. I rushed past him and I didn't pay with my life. Grab my bombs, go over this way. Thank you for that. I walked an invisible floor and got this far. An invisible floor. I'm gonna draw an X with a box there to make sure I don't do that. Then I got trapped in a pit, I can't believe my luck. How did you get out? Did you claw up to the top and then immediately starve to death as soon as you would use the last of your energy to climb out of it? What a sad way to go. Just, I made it! Oh. Bye, buddy. Thank you. Being able to just stab him in the back is so helpful. Here's the triangle pedestal. Yet I don't see any triangle crystal. Uh, oh, no. Going back up the stairs that I discarded before, we got this mess going on. There is a phantom of the slow blue variety. Feels good to see them again. I'm glad they didn't all turn into swift phantoms. It's okay, buddy. You didn't go with the trends, but that's okay. You are your own person. You don't have to listen to what other people think is cool. Uh, I do have to listen to what the Swift Phantom thinks about me going that way. Oh, gosh. Uh, this is... No. Come on. Give me the thing. I don't care. Give me the thing! Give me the thing! It would not pick it up. I was wanting to throw it back and then walk into... Okay, good. Okay. Come on. He sure walks fast for the slow variety of phantom. Hit that switch while the phantom is stunned. Run over this way. Hop aboard your noble blocky steed. The other links get to ride on a horse and then a talking boat and all I get is his block. Open the chest to get the first key. Round pedestal. This next thing that I want to show is a crapshoot. I'm gonna put down this key, get onto this thing, and I'm gonna use the boomerang to hit this switch. 
That causes a chest to appear that is not the easiest to reach. I'd recommend stunning the phantom first, but luckily he was in just such a, such a position that I could grab this power gem. Spared you the process of sneaking it all the way back over here and all the waiting involved. Sorry if I've been kind of cutty lately, and I don't just mean my remarks about the temple. It's that there's so much waiting involved for the phantoms to be in just the right spot to be able to make it back someplace that I just don't want to make you sit through all that. What's nice is that it's impossible to walk too fast to alert the phantoms while carrying the key. Um, I've had some inform me that throwing the key and walking into it is very slightly faster, but I feel like I don't always precisely tap on it every single time, and I'd maybe just rather not risk it in that case. It's not like it's hard to do or anything, or that I think that you shouldn't do it. It's just I personally don't like doing it myself. Um, I also don't know for a fact if it is faster. There's... Oddly, that not that many speedruns of Phantom Hourglass, all things considered, despite what the gimmick of the main temple you spend half the game in. So I thought I'd let you know that. Uh, there's that up there. Now, I don't think I really need to go that way. There's that ledge up there. Okay, let me, let me take a look. Nothing there. Maybe that's just a way for you to get the Sand of Hours without having to use the boomerang, but you've had the boomerang for ages, so maybe not. Basement floor nine. Phew, we come this far. It'd be nice. It'd be. Uh, it'd be nice if this was the last floor. But let's keep going. That is not the thing you want to hear when getting to a new floor of the Temple of the Ocean King. Triangle crystal. Take my arrows in my heart. And back up. Look, Link. There's a pedestal over here too. What? That was actually a helpful hint. That's pretty out of the view of the camera, and it's a good thing to know that in case you just happen to not look past the flames, which I didn't. Uh, it's gonna be a long journey back. Plop. All just to get rid of some ankle high spikes that I can't just walk over. <laughs> Hit the switch. And it opens the way forward. But we're not taking the way forward. Oh no. Oh, sweet Christmas now. There's that unnecessarily loud path up there that's a little suspicious, wouldn't she say? By. Following where the path is the darkest, you can walk down. The chest makes it look like it's wider than it actually is. Courage gem. How are we doing on those? I probably shouldn't check the map in here. Five. Not all that good. And with the door open, down on this way. Uh, I'm trying to think about what to do. I like using this to look around. Okay, there's no switch over that way. Start by talking to the old Bones. Oh, he was just gonna choose for us anyway. Well, we have a lot in common, Bones. I wanted to talk to you and you wanted to talk to me. I felt something behind me, but I turned around and there was nothing there. Next thing I knew, the sand in the hourglass was powerless. I don't think he's talking about the phantoms. Is there something else around here? Be careful, Link. Anytime you wanna show up on the map, there are skulls. Turn your back. And these Grim Reapers, upon being defeated, drop 30 seconds in the Phantom Hourglass. I'm gonna give you a, a, a hazardous guess at what they are called. Wizrobes. They don't use magic. They attack with size that steal 50, 15 seconds in the Phantom Hourglass. And they're called Wizrobes. Blaz on the first isle on the Isle of Ember was more of a wizrobe than the actual wizrobes. He They don't remotely look like any wizrobe I've ever seen and is another case of an enemy getting a redesign that is nothing like what they are supposed to be like. I guess whoever made this game just really hated giving ghosts the representation that they deserve. Hit that. And then we need to not be oh no, 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 thank you. Okay, so we have to hit this, not be facing it. Come on, hit it from far away. No. Look at him. Come on. No, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't work like this. He's coming. He does have the key, so maybe I'll deal with him first, actually. Oh, no, 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 no. I swear I wasn't rushing, it was my hand covering up the screen part way and I couldn't see that it was there and I didn't remember from a second ago. Marking that on the map would be good if you want to dedicate the time to it, it's just that I don't. 
I'm sorry, I'm getting very drained. This is going on for a very long time, and this visit to the Temple of the Ocean King, man. This visit. I said the last one wasn't that bad, but I did still explain that we were gonna be coming back here again and again, and it would be getting worse each time. This one is kryptonite for the motivation. This is where it turns up the diarrhea dials. I, ugh. I'm just ready for this dungeon run to be over. I've been here for a long time. I've been sneaking around. I've been stressed enough from doing this. If you like the Temple of the Ocean King, I'm not gonna tell you that you're wrong. Honestly, you are doing what I wish I could be doing, and, you know, it's great. It is great that some people like the Temple of the Ocean King. I'm just not among them. Face away, hit the arrow, there it is. Hit switch, and that makes a hole in the ground appear. I'm guessing that's how you're meant to get the key off of him, but you don't need it. Into the pit, it burns! No, there is a treasure chest from doing that. I had a feeling it would be the case. A spike handrail, I think that's a repeat ship part. Taking this uh, square key, not over there, but over here. And that opens the flame path that we saw before, looping back up to the top floor. There was a pedestal for the circle, square, and triangle keys, meaning now we have to backtrack through this floor. Go get the keys and bring them back here now that the square key has opened the pathway to the pedestals they're actually supposed to be on. I'll go over the triangle one first, because the circle one keeps this shortcut open, and uh, we're gonna be here a while. That's how you take out phantoms like a pro. Once the triangle gem has been gotten, go down these steps, and have a nice easy pathway to it. Thankfully, it's not required to go all the way back through the floor with the triangle key, that would be pretty bad, and I think on my first playthrough I actually ended up doing it that way. What does this say? I, I don't remember. Offer the three crystals on the- okay, whatever. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I wouldn't have figured that out on my own. Oh, wait. I could have gone up from the previous floor on the other staircase and gotten the triangle gem a lot quicker. That's- that's the time save that I missed out on. I guess that'll be something to improve on for next time. Taking this one down. We still have nine minutes in the Phantom Hourglass. It's not feeling that bad, and it did bother me that time as well that I didn't say the exact value of time that was left. Square key, your turn is next. There it is. Made it with eight minutes, 38 seconds to spare. Didn't bother myself that time. Set the crystals on the pedestals in this order. Square, circle, triangle. Going down, the exit is this way. Our light at the end of the tunnel is the Southeastern Sea Chart. Another corner of the world is our oyster. Now you can explore a new area of the sea. You got a new sea chart. Now we can explore even more of the sea. Ciela, your repeating powers have not waned. You are a truly powerful spirit. Want to try what the Fallen Explorer mentioned? Do you have enough time? I'm gonna end things a little abruptly without leaving the Temple of the Ocean King. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, we aren't leaving the Temple of the Ocean King, but giving a serious attempt at what those old bones were telling us and seeing where it leads. See you guys then.